Hi there Fabric Jugglers, it's Babs here from Fiery Phoenix and today I'm going to be taking you through a tutorial to create this ever so sweet little ruffle skirt. Um, it's a completely resizable um, pattern so you can measure it and calculate it for a toddler, um, a, a teenager or all the way up to an adult. There is a free pattern which you can download and I'll put the link in the description below. Um, the most complicated part of this is doing some maths, which honestly is very, very straightforward. You can have as many ruffles as you like, you can have as many different types of fabric as you like, and you can use whatever embellishments, lace, rickrack, whatever your heart um, wants really. So the only limitations to this, this pattern are, are your own imagination and knowing the guys in my Star Center Sew group, that's not going to be very limiting at all. Um, we are actually using this as the basis for a sew along project. So um, go grab your download and come back and watch to the end of the video. I've also included some um, bloopers. I've made some mistakes. I've been silly. How completely unusual. Uh, but I've decided to pop those on the end for you as a little treat um, as a bonus for watching all the way to the end as some of you seem to enjoy seeing those. So um, I'll speak to you later. Let's get sewing. So what you need to make this skirt today is your fabric of choice, some elastic, a rotary cutter and a straight edge and rotary mat if you're using a rotary cutter, tape measure, depending on the type of hem you're going to use, um, you may need a speciality foot. I'm going to be making a very small dainty rolled hem but that's entirely up to you, there's a whole choice of, of hem options. Um, you'll need a pin to actually pull the elastic through the waistband. Obviously you'll need your pins and needles and some scissors. So let's get on with doing some maths. So now we're on to the maths. Uh, there are two measurements you need to take off of your model which is the waist measurement and the length of the skirt. Um, the, the waist is going to be the size that you use for the elastic plus one inch which so if I've got a waist of 23 then my elastic is going to be 24 inches which allows for an overlap. The length of each of your ruffles and your connectors are also determined by the waist measurement. The connectors which are these parts in between the ruffles, the connectors will be um, one and a half times the waist measurement so for my 23 inches one and a half times that is 34 and a half inches and then the ruffles themselves are twice the length of the connectors that they attach to, which gives them the fullness. So in my case, that 34 and a half inches becomes 69 inches. Um, so I have a length of elastic, which is 24. I have a length for the connectors of 34 and a half, and I have a length for the ruffles of 69 inches. Now, if you want a fuller ruffle, you can increase the length. If you want a less full ruffle, you decrease the length. Um, and then we need to calculate the length of the skirt. So I've got three ruffles. I also have three connectors. You have one connector for each ruffle. The top connector becomes a sort of mini yoke and it is then um, sewn to include a casing for the elastic. Um, and all of those are the same length. So you will have three, which gives you the overall length. So in my case, I have three. You can have as many ruffles as you want. You can have two ruffles, you can have 28 ruffles, you can have whatever size ruffles you like. But the maths is basically the length of the skirt divided by the number of ruffles that you're looking for, plus one inch for um, an allowance for hems and seams. So in my case, I wanted a 15 inch skirt. So I have three ruffles of five inches each plus one inch. So that's six inches for each of my ruffles. Um, and it is that simple. It sounds complicated, it looks complicated, but actually when you go through the process and you apply your own figures and your own measurements, it really is very straightforward. Um, and then you simply cut out the fabric. Once you've cut the fabric out, then we can start to play. So, um, the next step is to make sure that everything is pressed 
and you can go ahead and choose what method you want to use for hemming your ruffles. Before we do anything else, we need to press and hem our ruffles. I was very lucky with this particular fabric. It prints all the way to the edge, including across the, um, the selvage. So my very bottom layer, I'm going to cheat and just leave the fabric with the selvage. It's, um, it is very pretty and, and it's secure, so why make extra work for myself? What I'm going to do now is go off and create some rolled hems for the rest of my ruffles. See you in a minute. Now I've chosen a dainty rolled hem. Uh, there is a tutorial for a rolled hem, um, uh, which I will put a link to in the description box below. You can obviously use any type of hem which you want, uh, but rather than me sit here and you watch me sew a rolled hem for the next 20 minutes, I'll come back when that's finished. So to create our old school ruffles, we will be using a stitch length of four and a tension of nine. We'll be using a standard presser foot and we may need to adjust it manually by hand at the end, but I will show you how to do that. This way you don't need to have any fancy um, kit or contractions. You'll just be using simple settings on your standard machine. So we're about to sew the ruffles. We've already checked the tension and stitch length. I'll just show you the hems that I'm using. Here is my cheating hem using the selvage. And as you can see, the, the print is actually quite lovely over the edge. And there aren't two obvious um, holes where the fabric has been created. So I'm just going to stick with this and, and cheat um, just to make my life that little bit easier. You can, of course, create a standard hem where you would take your raw edge you would press it under and then you would press it under again and then you would top stitch uh, or you could use a blind hem there's also a separate tutorial on how to create a blind hem you could of course just serge the raw edge um, or you could do as I have which is to create a rolled hem using the rolled hem presser foot so now that you've got Whatever hem choice you've made, and that is completed, we're now going to move on to ruffle the fabric. You can do this from the top side down or from the reverse. I'm going to do it from the reverse simply because that is what I'm used to doing. And uh, I'm just setting it on a straight stitch. I'm going to be running it in the left position so the needle is as close to the edges as I can manage, which will give me a nice safe allowance when I come to um, sew the fabric together in the ruffles um, with a nice healthy seam allowance without going crazy and losing too much length. So we'll run a sewing spider through and then we'll start to gather our fabric making sure that we have set all the tension as we want it. As you can see, we're already starting to achieve a gather. Um, and we may need to manually adjust that at the end, but uh, I'll come to that once we've finished. Try and concentrate so that you don't go off at an angle. Uh, if you start to pick up speed, it can be very easy to, to slide off. So just pay attention, focus on where the fabric is rather than where the needle is or what's happening behind it. leave a nice long tail so that that will make it easier for you to pull if you need to and as you can see we do already have a nice gather the um, the next part is to make sure that this gather is actually as long as one of your connector pieces so I'll just switch that off and quickly see if we can show you how to do that doesn't matter whether they're right side or wrong side together at the moment it is simply a matter of measuring the length and you will probably need to, to shorten up the ruffles. It's almost inevitable that that will be the case. However, it is a very simple process. So yes, I've got a little bit of fabric left over. So you need to find 
you need to cut off your sewing spider and then you need to find one end where you have the extra length of threads left over. Separate the two threads and one of them will be your top thread and one will be your lower thread. Pick one. I generally pick the top thread if possible and then you can ease the ruffles along. So we've now we've now hemmed and gathered all of our um, our ruffles. Um, as you can see, so I've got three ruffles: one, two, and three. Now, as you can see, these now match in length to my to my connecting fa fabric. There we are, so that matches. So what we're going to do now is actually start constructing the skirt. So there will be a lot of pinning um, in this next stage. So what we will be doing is pinning right sides together and I keep the ruffles on top. One, so that I can control how gathered the ruffles are and secondly, so that I can see that my seam allowance when I, when I sew is um, healthily away from the gather line. I also leave a nice amount of my pins over the edge of the fabric so it's nice and easy for me to remove them as I sew that um, seam allowance down. So this is where we simply gather and pin all the way down the length of the fabric. Trying to keep those ruffles as even as possible Bearing in mind they are ruffles, though it's perfectly acceptable for there to be some not perfect alignment. And we just work our way down. I find that by pinning the far end here, it's much easier to then realign any ruffles so that I don't end up with bald ruffle spots. So that there is a gather all the way along the fabric. Also try to keep the top line of the fabric as even as possible um, <clears throat> so that it's not bunching up and down and then you end up with all sorts of oddities when you're sewing. You want to try and keep that top line even with the straight piece of fabric beneath. So now that we have pinned our ruffle to our connector piece, we will sew them together. So we need to make sure that we've set our tension back down to standard, our length back down to about 2.5. And, um, and now I will begin at a needle position back to the middle. And I will then begin to sew the first ruffle to the first connector. So we'll run the sewing spider through first. And then using the width of the presser foot as a guide, having moved the, um, the position of the needle back across to, to the centre position, that means that I now have a nice safe space in which to sew. Remember to pull the pins out as we're going. And as you can see, we have a safe hemming line that's away from our gather line. And we can always adjust the gathers as we sew, if we feel that they're not quite as we want them to be.
Try not to get too carried away with adjusting gathers as you go, but if you see any particularly busy or particularly bald spots, you can adjust accordingly. So now, and so now you can see we have our first ruffle here, and we have our first connector. Now the next stage in connecting is slightly more complex, but still fairly straightforward. So we move everything out of the way, and what we will need is the the connector piece we're attaching to. We will need our next ruffle. And we will need our second connector piece. And what we will need to do is to sew these so that we have right side to wrong side for the first connector. And we need to make sure that the ruffle actually extends below the length of the original connector. And then we have our second layer connector, which we need to put right side to right side to the ruffle. So we're making a ruffle sandwich and when we've finished, we will open this out so that we then have a connector, a ruffle, connector and a ruffle. So hopefully you can now start to see where this is going. So I shall pin this next one on and then show you how I go about sewing through the three layers. What I like to do is pin from the front so that I can see how the ruffles would hang when the skirt is actually being used and worn in real life. Um, so I can adjust the ruffles as needed and also check that the connector is hidden beneath the length of my ruffle. Um, once I've done that, then I take my connector piece and I pop that on top. So I've got wrong right sides together so that when I flip it back up the other way, it will look as I want it to do. And then I simply take the pin out from the back and then move that across to the front. We know from our previous hemming that the the lines between or the stitch lines and seam allowance work around the gather as long as the gather fabric is facing up and out that's good we don't want it caught underneath upside down or trapped on the inside we want it to look nice and clean from the front. And um, once I have repinned this, this length, then I can go ahead and sew the next layer of my ruffle skirt. I will need to do this again for my final tier. Now, depending upon how many ruffles you have in your own skirt design, you will do this as many or as few times as you need. Um, so I'm not going to take you through this process a second time. I will simply move on to... Uh, to sorting out the the waistband and the elastic but until then I shall get this sewn and I shall be back with you soon so now that we've pinned this all in place I have to stop saying so now that we've pinned this all in place I will continue running through with my sewing spider And now we make sure that our fabric is aligned as we want and if you're not feeling very secure in that seam allowance you can always nudge it across somewhat and then and then move on from there always try and stop with your needle in the down position This is where it does start to feel like you're sewing and you need x-ray vision to see where all the fabric layers are. But as long as you keep checking the edges, you should be fine. And remember to use your fingers. You can feel if things are not quite lining up as you want them to be. If there is an extra fold or if everything's rocked up in a way that you don't particularly want, you'll be able to feel that. So just be aware.
one of the joys of the ruffle skirt is that you don't have to be absolutely precise um, because of the nature of the, the garment itself. makes it a very impressive uh, make for a beginner. It looks very complicated, however in reality it isn't. If you find that one of your connectors appears to be slightly longer than the other, by this stage it really doesn't matter. It's just a matter of keeping your top connector flat as you sew through to the end. And now we have our bottom two ruffles and our bottom two connectors. And as you can see, this particular panel is slightly longer, but that is simply because this bottom panel has become slightly ruffled itself. And that's not a major concern. Um, take off the sewing spider. And then you can repeat that process for as many ruffles as you have in your skirt. And um, I'll go through and do a zigzag across my internal seams to stop those fraying. Okay, so by now we have three tiers of ruffles. We have uh, zigzagged them all to secure the hems or we've surged them or whatever method you're, you've chosen to do. All of our edges are aligned, so they are all one neat row. And now what we need to do as I've come to the end of my ruffles is secure the waistband. So what I've done is I have I have pressed a, a quarter of an inch and then I have pressed again um, ensuring that this is actually wide enough to take the elastic that I'm using. And what we're going to be doing is simply sewing along this bottom edge to create a casing for the elastic. Once we've done that we'll thread the elastic through and then we will seam the entire skirt together and that really will be the end of your ruffle skirt unless now if you're feeling unsure you can always double check the width of your stitch lines and your elastic to make sure that the space that you're allowing or the space that you're creating within your casing is sufficient Again, to avoid feeling seasick or to uh, to lose concentration, focus ahead of the needle and the fabric ahead of the um, the presser foot, rather than looking at the actual needle itself. And you can always check to see how your top stitching is progressing if you stop, but um, don't try and do it whilst you're sewing, or you will end up all over the place. So now we should be able to thread our elastic through. So to thread it through I take my uh, safety pin 
and I always double double thread the elastic onto my safety pin rather than just leaving it loose at one end. <clears throat> Open that up and then slide it through. What we want to try and avoid is twisting the elastic as we're threading it through the, the casing. That would give a very unattractive waistline. I'll just quickly run through this and it's twisting already. Uh, which is why I mention it. So when we finished, I must remember to check that that elastic is lying flat within the casing because when we sew our final seam, I really do not want to have created a twisted elastic waistband. One, it would look unattractive and two, it will feel uncomfortable for the, uh, for the person wearing it and that's not what we want. Here we go. And snip off the snow sewing spider. And as you can see, we do have a twist in the middle of it. So we just need to even that out. Make sure you don't actually come off at the other end of the waistband. So just make sure that is a nice flat, flat band. And yeah, there we go. It's just shot through the end. So what we're going to do is pin it in place on this end. Make sure everything is flat as we want it to be. There we go. And then remove this. So we have the, the end, we've removed the safety pin. And what we do is slide this back in and pin it just for the moment. Because what we're going to do now is just double check that all of our ruffle layers are actually pinned in alignment because we're now going to be sewing the final hem for this skirt. So we bring it around. And we pin through both layers of elastic. And then we align where possible the, the ruffles which should be perfectly possible. Um, I tend to then let one ruffle seam go up and one go down just to avoid bulk um, so that the seams are nesting. And the reason that we pin the ruffles is so that they stay in place as we're doing this, this seam allowance. And again, one up, one down to try and reduce bulk where possible. Again, keeping the ruffles together, one seam down, one seam up. Now we have our final, final length of the skirt. So now I can stitch all of that together. Now because this is the of the skirt I am going to back stitch. I'm also going to lengthen my stitch as we're going through quite a lot of layers and I'm giving a nice healthy seam allowance. And we can double check that we have all our layers captured. One, two, three, four, all the way through. And again, one, two, three, four. One seam up, one seam down. Again, we have a 
reverse stitch at the end just to keep that secure and then one final thing is to change to a zigzag stitch and then secure the raw edges So if you've secured the raw edges to prevent fraying, you turn <coughs> the skirt around. And you can see that we have aligned fairly closely, although not perfectly, our edges. And we have a beautifully ruffled skirt. So for the, well, I've got to stop saying so at the beginning. So what we're going to need to actually make this ruffled skirt is some fabric. Uh, you need elastic, a blah. even says it on it. Right. Hello there fabric jobbers. We're going to try again and this is what we're going to need. We're going to need some fabric, we're going to need this, we're going to need this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and let's see, can we see it on my phone this time? I hope you found this tutorial useful and if you did please can you like the video and maybe even subscribe to the channel. You can find all my contact details at the end of the video and I hope to hear from you soon. If you have any comments or suggestions for future tutorials please just leave a comment below. Speak to you later. Bye.